communist for the FBI. <laughs> Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. From the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Sivetic come many of the incidents in this unusual story. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Sivetic who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. To be an actor, to live a part day and night for nine years, no time off, no vacation, every hour of every day to watch every word, every expression, every thought, because a single missed cue, a badly read line, would be enough to expose me to the harshest critics an actor ever had to face. My comrades, whose criticisms are written with fists, and clubs and violence. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabatic, Undercover Man. Dana Andrews as Matt Sabetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked Kangaroo Court. Summons from my cell leader, Commander Revchenko. No hint what he wants, except that his voice on the telephone sounds odd, as though he's worried about something, something serious. I wait with that emptiness in the pit of my stomach, speculating. What will it be this time? What piece of dirty work? What dangers playing both ends against the middle? What risks of being exposed as an FBI agent in the party? Sovetic, come in. Well, what is it this time, Ravchenko? Trouble. You'll wait in here with Graves until I call you. Sure. Hello, Graves. Hello, Svetik. It won't be long. Both of you wait. What is it, Graves? What's going on? I don't know. Ravchenko looked almost grim. He lacked his usual sunny, beaming disposition. Don't joke, Svetik. What are we waiting for? For Folsom to come out. He's in there being questioned. Questioned? About what? I I don't know. Let's see. Folsom, you, me. What was your last assignment, Graves? I was sent to Las Cruces. Millennium's attempt to come into the country. Ah. Ah, what? What was your assignment? The same. Millennium. Folsom and I, we picked Millennium up when he parachuted in the mountains. The FBI agents had us surrounded. We got away, but not Millennium. They got him. You read about the capture? Yeah. They knew. The FBI knew. Somebody tipped them off? How else could they know? How else could they be waiting? So, oh, that's what this is all about. Ravchenko's questioning us about it. No. No? There's someone from New York. He arrived this morning. Who is he? I saw him, a man by the name of Terre, a very quiet, small kind of man. Terre? You know him? I certainly know of him. Maybe he's small in size, but he's awfully big in the party. Very big. All right. So what? What's he going to learn? What's he taking so much time with Folsom for? We're going to find out. Look. I've always been loyal. There's never been any question about my loyalty. You have nothing to worry about, Graves. But they're questions. They twist everything around. At the end, you don't know whether you're innocent yourself. It's all for the good of the party, Graves. Sure, sure. We don't question what they do. No, of course not. We'll find out. We'll wait. We'll find out. If we have nothing to fear, nothing can harm us, eh, Graves? Of course. Nothing. I wait. As always, it's the waiting which is so bad. Of course, I had informed my contact in the FBI about an attempt to get someone into the country. That was all I knew at the time, that an attempt would be made. I didn't know when or by whom or how. 
until after I left Pittsburgh and arrived in New Mexico with Rev. Chinko and received my final instructions. Then there was no opportunity to call the FBI, so they must have had information from another source, that it was a millennium who was coming across the Mexican border in a small plane, that he'd parachute down into the mountains. So this was one time I was in the clear with the party. They could do all the questioning they wanted to. All I had to do was be careful and sit tight. All right, Graves. Not you, Sabetic. You wait. Folsom will keep you company, Sabetic. Hello, Folsom. Mm. Yeah. Was it bad? There's Comrade Ture. I've heard so much about him, huh, Folsom? Well, have you been instructed not to speak to me? One of us is a traitor, Sabetic. You or Graves or me. I'm not. So either you or Graves is the one. They'll find out. Sure, they'll find out. About Millennium's capture by the FBI, huh? All right, Folsom. I guess if I were in your place, I wouldn't say anything either. Well, I'll know soon enough, huh? Just as soon as they get through with Graves in there. Sabatic. My turn, huh? Your turn. Graves and Folsom will wait here. We're not finished. Well, it's been a long time since I was treated like a new party member. Suspect until he's proved his loyalty. I told you this is serious, Savitic. Sure. Why else would Comrade Torre come here? How do you know he's here? Is it a secret? Comrade Graves was How? just... Comrade Graves has a big mouth. This is Comrade Matt Savetic. Pleasure. My name is Torre. Please sit down, Savetic. I regret that an inquiry like this must be held. But we've lost a comrade of great importance. And my instructions are to find out how and why. Sure. For some time now, we in New York have had Comrade Revchenko and the members of this cell under close scrutiny. Many miscarriages of plans, upsettings of strategy, and general inefficiency have come to our attention. The road is not always smooth, Comrade Ture. Yes, that is what I said. At best, it is not smooth. We do not need members of our own party to dig more pitfalls. No, of course we don't. We've taken every precaution here to ensure the lawyers... I'm are... sure that you have, Revchenko. But the fact remains that you were entrusted with the plan for Anton Malinian's entry into the country. I followed orders. The plans... The plans were, were good. The execution was not. This is the latest in a long line of failures. We don't tolerate failures, do we, Revchenko? We're going to find out who's to blame. Yes. Only these three men were part of the plan. Only Folsom, Graves, and Savetic here were in on it. And you, Comrade Ruchenko? Huh? Uh, yes. And me. Makes a nice little package, doesn't it? Folsom, Graves, me, or you. One of us is guilty. You object, Savetic? Yes. The logic is at fault. You think there's nothing wrong here? I only know about myself. And I only know that Millennium was trapped by the FBI. Before he got into the plane, before he flew across the border, the FBI was waiting for him. They knew his plans, they knew our plans. Nothing wrong in that, sir? Now, wait a minute, you're twisting my words around. There's nothing wrong with me. I've got many years behind me, years of service and loyalty to the party. I don't like to be suspected without cause. Well... At least this one shows a little spirit, eh, Ravchenko? The others, Graves and Folsom, they were more apprehensive. You could call this insubordination, not spirit, Terry. Yes. Yes, you could. And you could call this independence. Too much independence. Yes, yes, I see your point. And you could call it a diversionary tactic because Savetic hasn't answered one question yet, has he? One question that has to do with the capture of Comrade Anton Millennium. <laughs> well... Perhaps I've done you an injustice, Revchenko. Your wits are sharp. Now, Svetik. All right. How about Millennium? I made my report to Revchenko. I didn't know Folsom or Graves were going to pick him up. I didn't know it was Millennium who was due to come into the country. I didn't know any of the plans, where, when, or how. 
I was with Ripchenko in New Mexico. At 8 o'clock in the evening, he got a telephone call and I got my instructions. Nobody knew before then. The call was from Millennium himself. 8 o'clock. My instructions were to drive to Mountain City, wait there at the only gas station in town until Millennium would be driven in. Then I was to take Millennium in my car and drive him to Las Cruces. What time was Millennium due? 9.30. Did you know how he was to get into the country? I told you, I didn't know. But you could deduce that he would be flown in over the Mexican border, that he would parachute into the hills close to Mountain City. You could No, I couldn't. I'll repeat, at 8 o'clock, I first heard about it. I got into my car and drove to Mountain City, and it's an hour and a half drive from Las Cruces. You to... could have stopped and telephoned the FBI. Yes, I could have stopped and telephoned the FBI, if I knew their number, if I knew that Millennium was going to parachute into the hills, and where, if. I were a traitor. I... These are the ifs that we must find out about. All this could have been accomplished if the FBI could have surrounded the area in the hills on short notice. So any ifs, Comrade Ture, aren't there? Yes, yes. But the ifs will change to maybe, and the maybe will change to certainty. Think of Millennium's wife waiting patiently for him to return to her after long years of separation. Her loss was serious enough. But this was also a man whose value to the party was incalculable. And so, Sovetic, we are going to get to the bottom of it. We're going to find out the truth. Levchenko? Yes. Bring the other two in now. Yes. How do you know there wasn't a leak somewhere else, comrade? Higher up, perhaps? No, Sovetic, no. No, we've already checked. The only one who knew the time and place was Millennium himself. He arranged it. He contacted Revchenko. Revchenko gave you your instructions and Folsom and Graves theirs. They were to meet Millennium in the hills. Even I didn't know the details. Kind of narrows things down, doesn't it? Yes, yes, but we will find out. Ah, sit down, all of you, please. Now, we've questioned all three of you. You all seem innocent. But that's impossible. One of you is guilty, has been lying. One of you is a traitor. We're going to find out which one. Perhaps a little lie will uncover the bigger one which is so well camouflaged. Perhaps a slip of the tongue will give us the wedge with which we can drive to the truth. Perhaps it's only something in the conscience of one of you which will point out your guilt. So we're going to conduct an experiment. We're going to find out which one of you is the traitor. How are you going to do it, Commodore? With a machine that I've brought with me, Sovetic. A machine? A lie detector, Sovetic. If there's the least particle of guilt in any of you, it'll show up with remarkable clarity. The lie detector never lies, eh? <laughs> With a pounding in my heart, I know this is the end, a dead end, a place of no return. Because if I can't control the pounding in my heart now, how will I control it when they strap that machine on me? How will I control the surging of my blood pressure, quickening of my breathing, sweating in my palms when they strap the machine to my chest and arm and hand, and watch the telltale dials as they probe and probe with questions I dare not answer myself? to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sivetic in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. It was important. Important enough for Comrade Ture to investigate personally. Important enough for him to use a lie detector on Folsom and Graves and me. The moment I'd feared in all the years I'd been an FBI undercover man working within the Communist Party is now at hand. Because even though I didn't give the FBI the information about Millennium, 
The questions Theray will ask must betray my secret. There isn't any way to control your heartbeat, your respiration, your inner response. Fulton is in there now. The machine is trapped to him. And Graves and I are waiting our turn. What did they do, Svetik? How did they do it? There's no way to cheat it. Not if you're normal. But what do they do? What's making you so nervous, Graves? I've been in the party a lot longer than you, Svetik. I've been in the party 18 years. I've seen what they can do, how they can twist what you say to suit themselves. I've been in it long enough for that, too. This, this lie detector, what does it do? Tells whether you answer their questions truthfully. But how? How? Well, right now, Folsom's in there. He strap his arm, like when your blood pressure's taken. This records your heartbeats, as well as your blood pressure. Will you answer a question if the graph needle shoots up? They know you're lying. And, and that's all? That's the way they do it? Hmm. Then they strap something around your chest. It's called a pneumograph. It records your breathing. And there's a little thing called a psychogalvanometer. And that's... What's that? What, what's that for? Little cups. They clip onto the palms of your hands. An electric current records the most minute trace of perspiration. Sweat when you're anxious, you know, Graves. Even if you think you don't. And then they ask you the questions? Moving very subtly, Graves. They ask them in a uh, different way. They go back and forth. You've got to remember to give the same answer all the time. Because they twist and turn, you know. Even if you're innocent, they can make you look guilty. Aesthetic. They watch the needles, Graves. The hands on the dials, the strokes of the automatic pen, which... Aesthetic. I swear to you, I'm innocent, no matter what happens in there. If they want to find me guilty, I'm innocent. I wonder how Folsom is making out. All right. Sabetic. I thought you were using the same protocol. Graves was questioned before me. Come on, Sabetic. Folsom, you will wait here. How'd you make out with Folsom? Your attitude isn't cooperative, Sabetic. Well, what do you want me to do, Comrade Rupchenko? Break up like Graves is doing? He's scared stiff. Maybe he's the guilty one. Maybe. And maybe you're covering up too well. Maybe. One day your tongue will get you in trouble, Savetti. Ah. Sit down, Comrade Savetti. Uh, right here, thank you. Again, I must apologize. Not at all. I can understand your position very clearly, Comrade Ture. Good, good. Now to adjust these cumbersome things. If you will open your shirt, please. Sure. It won't take too long. Not with an expert attending to it. Thank you, Zavetti. Must have had a lot of experience. I've used this method of determining justice before. I must warn you, I think you're making a mistake. Oh? You shouldn't let Graves sit out there and stew. You'll never get a good reading from him. He's half crazy with worry right now. Our instruments will make the necessary adjustments. Now, I think we're ready. Will you proceed, Revchenko? I'm ready. Revchenko is prepared to list the questions. I've got to steal myself. I must answer quickly. If I'm lucky, you'll touch on nothing that'll betray me. I've got to answer quickly. I mustn't even think about anything but a quick and positive answer. And all the while, there's a sick knowledge inside me that this is it. You'll find out, and this sham court of justice will meet out its own punishment. You left Las Cruces at 8 o'clock? Yes. Did you stop on the way to Mountain City? No. Did you know before you left that it was Comrade Millennium who was coming into the country? No. When you reached the gas station in Mountain City, what time was it? 20 minutes after 9. What did you do? Parked a half a block away, went into a diner across the street and waited there, watching the gas station, waiting for Millennium's arrival in the car. When he didn't show up? I waited. How long? I waited until a quarter to eleven. Should have been there at half past nine. I thought maybe the plans were changed. I called you at local headquarters. That's all? You stayed in the diner until then? Yeah. At no time did you call the FBI? <laughs> Here it is now. A question I can't answer truthfully. At no time did I call the FBI. Yes, I did call them. And if I lie about it, the machine will show I'm lying. Already the machine must be recording the sweating in my palms, pounding in my heart. I asked Comrade Savetic if you called the FBI. What do I say? How can you cheat a machine? It can detect the slightest inner trembling. Why do you hesitate, Savetic? Comrade Revchenko asked if you called the FBI. That... 
I can say no, not after I got to New Mexico. That's a truthful answer. And the machine will show that it's the truth. Just like answering, when did you stop beating your wife? You're trapped. The next question will tighten the noose right around your throat as surely as the if FBI, you were... The FBI, Semitic. Did you call the FBI? No answer is just as bad as a confession. I must answer something. I must... Get there, Folsom. Get in. What is it? What are you doing, Graves? He's crazy. I didn't have a chance. He suddenly pulled that gun out of his pocket and... Put it away, Graves. Put the gun away. You're not going to railroad me. I'm not going to let you trick me with your questions and your machines. Stay where you are, all of you. No one is trying to trick you, Graves. You have nothing to worry about. Now just let me have the gun. Don't move. Don't move or I'll shoot. Eighteen years in the party. And still you don't trust me. You inspire a lot of trust right now with that gun in your hand, Graves. Graves! I said don't move. Lie, detector. An infernal machine you can make say anything you wanted to say. Graves, you have it all wrong. Of course, we trust you. Graves, just relax. Calm down. Stay away! It'll be your heart next, Comrade Ture. Like the heart you want to measure on me. So you can find someone to blame. So you can settle on one of us to show the party how efficient you are. Well, it's not going to be me. Hey, Graves. You too, Svetic. I don't trust any no, of you. No, 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 Graves. I'm with you. This whole thing is a rotten setup. We know that. Making us fall, guys. You're right. Look, we'll both of us get out of here. Wait a minute. Just help me get these things off, will you? Graves, you're out of your head. Am I? I'm protecting myself, that's I all. I know you are. Sure, Graves. Uh, how about protecting me? So, come on. Hey, loosen me up, will you? We'll go away together. Sure. Come on, help me. All right. You sit still, Revchenko. <laughs> and you, Tere. You're not going to move, are you? <laughs> Here, Tvedic. We'll take this off your chest first, then. Sure, now, thanks. This thing around my arm. And unwind this. All right. I've got the gun now. Stand back, Graves. Good work, good work, sir. He's hysterical. There's no Graves. Way out. There's no way out. How can you? Well, I believe we've got what we've been looking for. As clear an admission of guilt as I've ever seen. And I'm grateful for your quick thinking, Savetic. I'll commend you to party headquarters. Yeah, thanks. Well, uh, what are your plans now? For Graves? Well, I'd like to see him get what a traitor deserves, but perhaps it wouldn't be wise right now. Anyway, a little discipline, eh? Enough to let the FBI know we've uncovered one of their agents. So his usefulness to the FBI is finished, and our cell can operate in safety again. Those are the important things. No, this is hard to believe. Eighteen years a party member turned traitor to the cause. You cannot be too careful. Let this be a lesson to you, Savetic. Never trust even a comrade. That's a great tagline. Never trust a comrade. Graves' nerves cracked under the strain. And that was all that saved my neck. But something boils around in my mind. I call my FBI contact, Donnie old Disco. Well, about 8 o'clock in the night, I meet him in the park. Glad it turned out all right, Matt. Must have been hair-raising for you there for a while. Something troubles me, Johnny. Maybe you can explain it, huh? Maybe. What is it? How could Graves have informed you about Millennium coming into the country? Oh. He didn't know. He didn't know until I knew. Neither did Folsom. Neither did Rev Chinko. Uh-huh. Nobody knew. Yet there you were, ready and waiting. Well, you should be able to figure it out, Matt. Only one person knew the details. Millennium himself. That's right. But he didn't inform on himself. No. Oh, wait a minute. I've got it. His wife. <laughs> That's right. His wife. She's been against his communist activities ever since they were married. She wanted him out of the party. But there was no way to get him out. The party wouldn't let him go. So she forced the party to let him go this way. By letting the FBI know about him. About him coming into the country, I mean. Uh-huh. Clever, huh, Matt? And Graves will take the burden for it. Graves is a dyed-in-the-wool commie. No further use to them. Unstable. And they think he's an FBI agent. Yeah. So how'd you pressure Graves into busting up? Well, he did most of it himself. Eighteen years. That's a long time to nurse an ulcer. It's got a rupture after a while, you know. How about you, Matt? Feel like busting up? Yeah, there's a moment there when... Oh, well... Yeah, I know. But you see, you got friends, Matt. Funny, isn't it? 
with all the comrades they have, they don't have a single friend. I leave Johnny O'Driscoll in the park and walk along the streets toward my place. How long before the 10,000 things inside me eat out my heart and mind? For Graves, this is the end. But for me, there isn't any end. For me, there's only facing Ravchenko again. Going on again with a thousand to raise with lie detectors, tooth serums, and a way of life filled with empty stirrings and twisted, tortured hopes and dreams. And in this seventh circle of the seventh circle of Dante's Inferno, I walk on and walk my lonely way alone. Dana Andrews will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews with a thought for those who think they can only be insignificant and helpless spectators in a world struggling for sanity and peace. Just remember this line. It's better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. The story you've just heard is based on notes from the files of Matt Savetic, FBI undercover man. Names have been changed and events modified for obvious reasons. Next week, another exciting adventure out of Matt Savetic's experiences as a communist for the FBI. Be with us then, won't you? We'll be expecting you. 